Welcome to our new garden. Let's walk around and I'll give you a tour. I got my little helper here. This is Joanna. She's one and she's gonna help us walk through the garden. There's two main areas right now in this kitchen garden. The first is what I'm calling the cottage garden, which is over here on my right. It's made up of Birdie's raised garden beds. I'm gonna pop in a clip here of showing you what it looks like opening up these boxes and assembling one of these beds. These Birdie's raised beds come from Epic Gardening. I have three short ones and this medium sized tall one, which is 29 inches tall. It's super comfortable for planting, great when baby wearing or when dealing with any back pain. I will link them in the description. You can use code SUNSHINEFARMLIFE5 for 5% off. Over on Instagram, I'm sharing how I fill, filled this without spending any additional money on soil. In this cottage garden, there's a mix of perennials and annuals. Uh, we just started planting this like a week ago, so it's pretty new. I think my favorite part is the David Austin roses. Some of these I brought from New York and others I've acquired over the past almost two years since we've been out this way, out in California. Um, I have a Cafe Ole Dahlia. I have some milkweed. This is a, a native milkweed to this region. I have a pineapple plant. So this is pineapple right here. Um, that was for my brother-in-law. He started it from a store-bought pineapple. And I have a little finger lime tree here, which um, I just planted the other day. I need to get some, some mulch and some compost around that. And a bunch of other things. So there's one, there's two more David Austin roses. There's another rose in the back. There's some yarrow, some penstemon. This is another really fun plant, which some people call a winter rose, but the proper name is Camellia. And I have two. You can see this one right here is blooming right now. This one is the Nucio's Pearl. It grows in temperate regions, so I think it's like eight or nine plus. It doesn't grow, doesn't grow in the colder regions, unfortunately. And then I have another smaller one over there that I haven't planted yet. This raised bed's empty. This one over here is currently my son, my three-year-old, <laughs> my three-year-old's garden. Um, we planted some fun things. He really wanted a strawberry. He, I know he'll love the ground cherries, so I planted two different varieties of ground cherries. Ground cherries are a really, really tasty fruit, especially if you have young kids. They grow in this little husk and you kind of unwrap it like a candy and it's this like sweet, juicy, tropical flavored, um, looks kind of like a, t a, a cherry, cherry tomato, but it's definitely fruitier than a tomato. Then these are dwarf tomatoes. So I have two tiny Tims. We have a bunch of fruit on them already. And then this one is a, a heart, a heart dwarf. I have some zinnias, straw flower. And then I think we're going to put a little ring of carrots around cause he's really enjoying eating carrots lately, which is awesome he is a picky toddler. So um, that kind of covers the cottage garden. I have plenty more plans for this space, but it's going to fill out. It's going to be really lush. You're barely going to be able to walk through here, um, which is great. And then I'm just going to have enough room to walk around these beds. This bed I planted just the other day. I filled it up with a bunch of stuff and then I'm going to direct seed a bunch of things in here too. So I got a dwarf tomato, four dahlia plants, a bunch of flowers, a bunch of flowers, um, some sweet potatoes that are going to like grow out the side that I started from store-bought slips. They just have some sun scald here, so they're going to grow new leaves. They'll be fine. Some more dwarf tomatoes and a bunch more flowers like snapdragons, stock, uh, celosia. I don't remember status, maybe some other things. So yeah. These three wooden beds we built a couple months back. All of this is like brand new. So um, I'm kind of surprised how lush everything has been. I've been really impressed by the compost that we got, which is mostly what is filling these beds. So we're basically growing this in compost. So in here I have a bunch of different brassicas, peas that I didn't adequately support. There's like flopping over all over the place, but they're they're mostly done. We're getting into the summer-ish weather, so I'll pull them soon. But there are a bunch of peas on here, so 
I'm gonna pick one for my daughter to see if I can satisfy her. Oh my goodness, is that so yummy? Mm. Do you want do you Anna also play with a flower? We got peas. What's funny about this bed is when we first planted it, rabbits came in and ate everything, like totally everything. I think on multiple occasions. And so then I just started a really, really simple hack of row cover and garden stake. So I have these like garden stakes here. I just throw a row cover over and have some clothespins and it completely eliminated the problem. So they've come back a little bit now that I've stopped using the row cover, but they're only nibbling on the outer leaves of some of this kale and I have plenty of kale. And so I'm just letting them kind of sacrificing the plants for them. Other than that, they've left everything alone, but if they start causing a problem again, I can just throw the row, row cover right back on at night. It's only at night. I also have some other things in here like thyme, dill, Egyptian walking onions. This is a perennial onion. So cool, it spreads itself by walking, which is how it gets its name. Snapdragons, which are a perennial here. Bunch of nasturtium growing everywhere. And then cauliflower, which is getting a little head. I'll show you that in a minute. This bed is doing great. Uh, let's go to the bed behind me. As you can see, everything is really interplanted and that's a big component of how I garden. I follow permaculture practices, which means a lot of interplanting, a lot of diversity in how I plant. I'm often using like chop and drop and mulch. These beds don't have mulch right now because um, I'm still playing around with the mulches that I like, but eventually I'm gonna be mulching everything. It's also hard to mulch when things are full like this because it's just there's not a lot of space to mulch the, the the plants themselves are kind of acting as a living mulch or what you can call green mulch so it's not as important when it's like this but when it's empty or like some of the other beds i showed you it mulch is, is especially important so in here just talk about some of the things i've got first and foremost these ranunculus which are going to be done in the next couple weeks but they're lovely they're not what i ordered never are they're always they're always totally different than when i order but they're so lovely i'll save them i'll save the the um corms and plant them next year <laughs> do you like you can show her do you like your pee i can get you another pee do you want another one hi joey they will grow in cold climates um i grew up in rochester new york zone six they're probably gonna, you'd probably plant them in like April there and they'll be blooming in late May, June. Whereas here, they're a winter spring flower. We're in zone 10A and we don't get frost. So you can plant these in like January, February and get them in, I would say like April is March, April, May, is the time where you're getting blooms. Right now we're May 7th, May 8th, 8th. May 8th. So, yeah, they'll be done soon, um, but they're lovely. And then I have watermelon radish, which have been so tasty and they're bulbing up really nicely. I'm gonna show you what one looks like because this one is gonna bolt soon, so I might as well pull it. I'm just gonna pull this guy. You can see it's huge. That's what you want. You want a nice size watermelon radish, but um, I'll wash this off real quick. They are amazing on the inside, they look like a watermelon, like pink and green and just like really beautiful. And they're extremely, extremely mild. I'm gonna pop this in my harvest basket real quick. We have two bunnies now and we have ducklings and goslings. And so some of this extra stuff that I'm harvesting, like bolted cilantro and some of these radish leaves are gonna go straight to the bunnies and they're gonna really enjoy them. So, um, Put the radish in there. I also have some kohlrabi. So kohlrabi is another really fun vegetable that you often won't see in grocery stores. Maybe sometimes, maybe at a farmer's market. Um, kind of cabbage-like, but solid. It doesn't have like layers like a cabbage. And it makes a really fun French fry. Uh, kohlrabi fries are really fun to make, but you can also use it as a slaw. It's a really fun vegetable. It grows kind of like an alien. It's just so unique. So you can see it starting to bulb over here. There's purple and green varieties. I have both here, but only one purple. The next to that is carrots. And my carrots 
are just amazing in this bed. I've grown carrots many, many times. Uh, let's see if I can show you one. Look how pretty it is. I planted these like two months ago. Not even. It hasn't been that long. Is that a carrot? <laughs> you want a carrot? This is a really big one. Do you want a little one? Go and get your shoes on. Told you, that kid loves carrots. He, he came from playing with his cars and he said, I want one. Let me wash this and you can hold it. You can hold it. And then I'll give it to Malachi. Okay, great. Let me clean this off for you. And I'll pull the green part off. And I'll pull the root off. Now you can start eating it from that way, okay? You can give it to mom and dad when you're done with it, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me carry it. Okay, so I'm just really proud of my carrots. I, it's been a struggle to grow carrots and they can be really tricky. And um, you direct seed them. I've had them take like three, four months. These, they're like beautiful, delicious, very healthy carrots in like two months. So um, try carrots in a raised bed of compost and see how it goes for you. Cause I've had a lot of success with that. Next to the carrots, I have some poppies. They haven't bloomed yet, but soon. I have potatoes, threw those in from grocery store potatoes, some organic yeah. potatoes. They are very healthy and large and some forage. That's the um, blue flower back there. It's edible as well as some cilantro. The nasturtium, I just had to like move it around. That's why it's like kind of flopping over, but um, I like to trail it outside of beds so that it doesn't take up growing space. And there's some poppies over here too. Those are a champagne poppy, like a California poppy. They're closed up because it's getting to be nighttime. Um, and then here's some more borage, which again is edible. People say it tastes like cucumber, but I find it even more mild than that. And a little sweet. Flower. Flower. Wow, you're doing a great job on that carrot. It looks delicious. You don't know what to think about that. I have onions on the perimeter and that is for pest deterrent, um, deterring pests because pests won't eat onions. I mean, there are a few onion pests, but like a regular mammal insect pest, they're gonna leave your onions alone for the most part. And, <laughs> and so it's a good idea to plant them on your perimeter. It may deter pests. And in the past, I found that like the pests will just jump right in to your bed and eat whatever they want anyways. But at least you have a beautiful border of something that is edible and the pest will leave alone. Um, a couple more potatoes in here. I have holy basil or Tulsi on the borders. That is a really great annual. It self seeds. Oh, there's a baby bunny. <laughs> that is probably what's eating my kale, but so cute. I really don't mind, honestly. I'm, I feel like gardening, you're always problem solving and coming up with solutions. And so I don't really blame the pests, um, even though they can be super frustrating. Mm -hmm. Instead, I just like always, am just trying to brainstorm more solutions. In here, I have something called a pepino, which is a perennial in our climate. You can, it's actually a perennial. It can be a perennial in any climate, but in colder climates, you'd have to bring it indoors over the winter. It makes like a little, melon sized fruit that's really pretty it's like yellow with stripes and it tastes like a melon i grew it in new york and it was really tasty and i'm looking forward to having it as a perennial here you can take cuttings from it really easily these are sweet peas i didn't realize they grew so low i'm not sure why they're doing that they're supposed to grow up so we'll see what happens um, i have some slosha more ground cherries dwarf tomatoes brussels sprouts i have six brussels sprouts right here Cosmos, a couple dahlias sprinkled in, and other flowers. Um, I plant flowers in every single bed to add beauty, attract pollinators, deter pests. Nasturtiums are a really good pest deterrent. That's the kitchen garden right now. That's where things are at. We're gonna take you down and show you where our main garden will be, and also show you our greenhouse, which is a new addition. Uh, we've never had a greenhouse before.
So these stairs Chris built recently. It's been a huge game changer because before this like flat area of our property was not accessible. Um, and since these steps were built, we put in a greenhouse. We're starting to add garden beds and now we're building our duck and goose run. So a lot is happening now in this area that was, you know, a few months ago, not even really accessible without going all the way around either direction, which just was silly. So we'll talk about this area in a minute over here. This is going to be the main garden, but I do want to show you the greenhouse first. This may look familiar if you're at all familiar with the Costco greenhouse. It is a Costco greenhouse by Yardistry. This one is the larger one, which I haven't actually seen in stock. Um, we purchased it online as opposed to in the store. But I think in the store right now, I recently saw that the smaller one was on sale for like $400 off. This one was about $2,000. Um, but it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I'm still, it's a learning curve growing in a greenhouse, but I'm really enjoying it. So it's pretty empty right now because everything is getting planted. But I have like some holy basil left and I have some perennials like this mango tree here that I still need to plant and some cherimoya trees and a bunch of other tropical trees like jackfruit and loquat and like Suriname cherry and carob tree, like just a bunch of unique tropicals. So when you come in the greenhouse, this was pretty much full. Like this whole area was full of plants. I didn't have to use the upper shelf much. Um, but what I like about the bigger one is there's room for a little table and chairs, and I do use this a lot. Sure. And there also is room for a green stock. I need to get a spinner base for this, but I'm gonna fill this up and probably plant things that are like heat loving crops, like hot peppers, you know, tomatoes, things like that. You're just nomming on that carrot, huh? You can water anything in this bed, okay? Yeah, a bunch of tomatoes. Some of these are like gonna be like my second round of tomatoes. So I'm gonna pot them up and wait to plant them. And then some flowers. I just potted these guys up. Some tomatoes that I killed by forgetting to water them. There's like some fun stuff like goji berries and some dahlias from seed. Cherimoya trees, which is a very cool fruit tree. Super, super tasty. Got some more artichokes. I'm gonna be planting artichokes kind of everywhere because it's a really good hillside stabilizing plant to prevent erosion and i really like artichokes and they're super pretty and they have beautiful flowers and it's just a great plant i grew them in new york too so you can grow them in cold climates i had one that came back three years in a row so this bed is 24 24 feet long and four feet wide so it's a long bed we're gonna have at least probably at least three of these maybe four i'm still like thinking through the garden design but in this bed this bed was predominantly for tomatoes so i have I don't know, like 30 tomatoes in here and then peppers down on the outside, as well as a bunch of flowers, some herbs, another pineapple plant, dahlias, just a bunch of stuff. I'm trying this thing by putting a trench between the tomatoes and filling it with mulch to try to help with just like some water retention to provide them with some moisture on hot days. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, can you go water the other side of the bed? Not this side anymore, but over there. The other thing about this, the tomatoes, there's basically two rows in the middle where the trench is. There's gonna be a cattle panel trellis all the way down. So there's about 18 feet of tomatoes. And that way we can tie them up to the trellis. I staggered the planting so it's kind of like um, a zigzag so that on each side they won't be touching each other. Um, and I will be doing a lot of pruning to keep good airflow because we are only nine miles from the coast, which means we get an ocean view, um, but also probably probably we'll have like fungal and uh, disease issues <laughs> uh, because that's what I've heard. People struggle with tomatoes in California. We're gonna see those. <laughs> it's all new. A couple other things I wanna point out. <laughs> this is a fun game. Uh, some new additions. Well, first of all, we have two macadamia nut trees. They're very mature. We didn't see them fruit this past year, but we don't really know how the previous owners were taking care of them. So this year they got, they've been blossoming a lot. They look very healthy. So I'm curious to see if they produce 
they're very mature and macadamia nuts are actually the most expensive nut I mean they're incredibly expensive to buy and it would be really fun I love them they're so tasty we could make our own macadamia nut butter and macadamia nut milk and I don't know just do lots of fun things with them in addition to that we planted two other nut trees our favorite nursery is our neighbor which was a really fun surprise when we went and saw this place but um, they, had, they had some almond trees. So we planted two. This one has some almonds on it, actually. See right there? And then there's one more right over here. What'd you do? What'd you do? <laughs> Making like a berm around them to capture the moisture. They've got a mulch. 12 inches away from the Mama. yeah you found some tomatoes you want to show me the tomatoes you found don't pick <laughs> them yet that's pretty cool when it's ready to eat do you want to be the one to eat it mm. okay i'll <laughs> let you know when it's ready okay you please um uh it's ready right now it's not ready right now i promise i'll tell you when okay it's not ready yet. Lots of tomatoes. All different kinds of varieties. A lot of romas and saucing types. And then just a bunch of fun ones. Oh, mm. uh, well, the other tree I wanted to show you, we planted just the other day. And that is a peach tree. Mm. And we also planted a loquat tree. I don't know if it's a tropical fruit, but it tastes yeah, very tropical. Yeah, look. And um, we also have a passion fruit vine going in over by the duck. Mm -hmm in Goose Run. I will show you them in a future video, but um, the loquat tree is going to get really big and will provide shade to the ducks and the geese. And then the passion vine is growing on one of the run walls that is close to a wild beehive. And so I really want to protect the ducks and the geese from the bees like in case there's anything that goes on with the bees. I don't want them to get attacked. We are going to be working with a beekeeper, a local beekeeper, and getting the equipment to move the wild honeybee colony. We'll be moving into a hive. So we will end up being beekeepers kind of accidentally. And that will be a journey that we will share with you all. There's a lot more to share with you. Thank you guys for being here today for our first garden tour. Post your questions in the comments, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye, friends. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs> Never rains in California. <laughs> so happy. The sun is always shining right. Dang it.